humanity is on thin ice and that ice is melting fast. The 1.5 degree limit is achievable, but it will take a quantum leap in climate action. We have become used to the repeated warnings about what will happen if the world does not do something about climate change. The lights are flashing red on the climate dashboard. One particularly sobering aspect of the report released today by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is not that the predictions are getting gloomier, but that the report now contains increased documentation of the impact climate change has already had. Not just the extreme weather events, the retreat of glaciers and mass extinctions of species, but the now measurable impact on people. The IPCC says that roughly half of the world's population currently experiences severe water scarcity for at least part of the year due to a combination of climatic and non-climatic factors. In all regions, increases in extreme heat events have resulted in death and disease. Climate and weather extremes are increasingly driving people from their homes in parts of Africa, Asia, North America and Central and South America, along with small island states in the Caribbean and South Pacific. We're already at 1.1 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial and at that sort of temperature rise we're already seeing things like black summer which is burnt into our memories. So you know, we really don't want to go too much higher. The UN report also spells out the economic toll to climate exposed sectors such as agriculture, forestry, fishery, energy and tourism. Individual livelihoods have been affected by the destruction of homes and infrastructure. In urban areas, it says, observed climate change has caused adverse impacts on human health, livelihoods and key infrastructure, including transport, water, sanitation and energy systems. This report actually does more on the economics than previous uh, reports did. The benefits from keeping temperatures down to two degrees through greenhouse gas emission reductions far, far outweigh the costs of doing that. And that doesn't even take into account the costs of avoided climate damage, nor does it take into account the co-benefits that can come from emission reduction, such as reduced coal-fired power stations, reduces air pollution, and hence uh, morbidity and mortality that arises from that. And just that component by itself, the health issues related to air pollution, is about the same size as the cost of the energy transition. There's a bit of a tone of weary and resigned plea from the scientific heart in this latest report from 700 scientists around the world. They say their report is our final warning. That is, the report is the last that will be completed before we reach the point where world temperatures hit the critical 1.5 degrees of warming by 2030. We have to reduce carbon dioxide emissions by about two thirds. Uh, by 2035 to be consistent with 1.5 degrees. And again, that's going to be a really significant challenge, one which we really have to put all our shoulders to the wheel to achieve. An incredibly depressing and landmark report that was released overnight, which is the last wake-up call for this parliament. Which brings us to the current Australian political debate. The Albanese government's emissions reduction policy has set a target of cutting emissions by 43 per cent by 2030. It's never been regarded as enough by the Greens. Even if they're not, from their point of view, 100 per cent perfect, even if they're not what they would design, there is a choice before the parliament. And no member can criticise this government on targets if they then vote against policies to achieve emissions reduction. But whether it is enough or not, the major policy change the government has in mind to achieve it is its proposed changes to the so-called safeguard mechanism, an obligation on big emitters to reduce their emissions. If the safeguard mechanism reforms are not passed, 43% will not be met. The safeguards is a nice, it's a nice platform to start from and we build on that, but we need a starting point and we need the safeguards through. Negotiations are stuck in the Senate with the Greens suggesting they will not support the changes unless the government agrees to stop all new coal and gas developments. Yeah, I think they should stop crying wolf um, and, and really have a good, cons good think about this. I know it's not the most riveting way to spend lunch talking about a policy mechanism. Kerry Schott, the former head of the Energy Security Board, says the subject may be dry, but fixing the safeguards mechanism, and soon, is vital to getting emissions down. This is a really important policy and it's extremely critical that we uh, get this legislated this week or next week and in place by the 1st of July. 
If the date drags past the 1st of July, it means that meeting the 43% target that's been set by the government for emissions reduction by 2030 is pretty well out of reach. And certainly it's going to make getting to the 2050 target of net zero virtually impossible if we don't get to 43% or somewhere near it by 2030. So while it's just one piece of legislation, it is a very important piece of legislation. Big problem with the safeguard as designed now is that pollution from coal and gas goes up. Pollution from coal and gas goes up, not down. And I've read reports that suggest that you know, X hundred million tonnes of pollution is going to be cut by the safeguard. That could all be offsets. To the corpse of the emissions trading bill. Hanging over the Greens, though, is their reputation as the destroyers of Labor's emissions trading system 13 years ago in the pursuit of the perfect instead of the good. The thing that the Australian Parliament did today was save the Prime Minister from himself. There is cautious optimism that a way will be found through the negotiations. There are a lot of people urging flexibility, including Kerry Schott. Safeguard mechanism isn't going to fix everything, but at least we will have the policy in place and we can be moving forward and industry can have certainty about what is going to happen.